Hello and welcome to the Fort Johnson podcast where we bring you the latest stories, resources, and insights from our military community. I'm your host and today we're diving into a program that's all about empowering our service members and Department of Defense civilians for life after the military. The Transition Assistance Program or TAP is here to provide the tools, guidance, and support you need as you navigate the next chapter of your life. Whether you're an active duty soldier, a National Guardsman, a reservist, or a DOD civilian, TAP is designed to help you with your pre-separation counseling, employment services, and much more. So stay tuned as we discuss what TAP has to offer and how it can make a difference in your transition process. Let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you are listening to this podcast. I am Jeff England from the Fort Johnson Public Affairs Office, and we are here in the Fort Johnson Podcast Studio. Today with me, I have uh, two very special guests, and uh, Clifton Hill Sr., because apparently has he has some other people with him, <laughs> and Chris Osmond, both from the TAP, uh, well, DHR, TAP, and uh, it used to be, it used to be SFL tap. It did. And now they just switched it back to just regular tap? Just tap. Just, just tap. tap. Sweet. Because uh, everyone already knows that it's a soldier for life and uh, uh, once a Marine, always a Marine. And, um, and Air Force is, um, we always have our head in the clouds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how's it going, guys? Good to see you guys. It's going well. Going All very well. All right. Uh, so... Y- the TAP program is a transition assistance program. So it, it, give us an overview of, of what the, uh, the TAP program is all about. Because, you know, I just learned today, I was today years old when, it, when, it, when I learned it, uh, it actually helps the DOD civilians also. I thought this was soldiers only, but no, it's apparently everybody, huh? Yeah, so, so it's going to, any soldiers that are transitioning, obviously, that, that's the, the work load of the program, obviously, but it's, it's also for Department of Army civilians, retirees, uh, soldiers, family members, and also caregivers. So, you know, we have a, we have a lot of opportunities, you know, and that's, that's one of the things we're trying to do is, is get out there and, and get the information for the Transition Assistance Program and how it can benefit our community and help help those soldiers, whether it be here or somewhere else in the United States. Now, the, uh, the where is your office? I mean, everyone, you, you work out of the office, uh, but the last time I heard, I, where is the TAP office? It's at the uh, Education Center. That's exactly where I was going to say, because yeah. <laughs> I'm smart like that. <laughs> if you don't know where the Education Center is, it's a 7460 Colorado Ave. It's, it's basically right next to the PX. Well, it's uh, the well, it's in the library. Well, the library is in the same building. Mm-hmm. So Correct. yeah, behind behind the PX, yeah. which is it's behind the PX, behind that Bank? CYS or CYS, it, yeah. and then uh, so been. it's back there someplace. Yeah. But yeah. you know what else they have in there? They have a cooking classes uh, set up, a cooking class room. In the education center. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I couldn't believe it. I go in there. It's like, oh, I could do a cooking show. Yeah. And then I remembered um, people don't like me cooking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you have uh, special programs going on, and uh, I'm sure that uh, in addition to you wanting everybody to know about your program mm-hmm. and uh, more adver- or advertisement, more word of mouth and more information put out there, what else uh, is important that you want to make sure that everyone knows? So I, well, one thing I'd like to highlight, I think what's what's special about our program here, and it's 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 in a lot of places across the U.S. or as far as AMCOM, but we have our team, Mr. Hill and myself, are both retired soldiers. You know, so we've we've went through the program. We we're still passionate about taking care of uh, the customer, uh, which I, I I think that helps the program. You know, and then, and one of the things that we're really pushing is is the timeline. Uh, the army is graded essentially based on compliance and timeliness. Because when you look at when you look at the TAP program, it's 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 in the regulation 600-81, but it's also NDAA, so it's it's law. Soldiers have to go through transition assistance. Um, and what we want to do is help educate those those command teams out there, those soldiers that are out there, because it's based on a timeline. Like there's there's key things that soldiers got to do before they hit 365 days prior to the transition. So by, before then, they need to have their self-assessment done, their initial counseling done, and their pre-separation counseling. Uh, all that's got to take place before 365 days. Um, 
because there's key aspects, right? So when you look at the program, uh, if you're a normal soldier that is going through uh, ETS, Excellent Service, uh, they can start the transition assistance program 18 months out prior to, to prior to Excellent Service. If you're a retiree, you want to start 24 months out. Uh, so you have that capability, but that that increases that window. But by law, you have to have certain things done before you hit 12 months, uh, and that's the key aspect. We want soldiers to enroll early, get out there, get enrolled, and everything else because we have phenomenal program. We have phenomenal counselors on it uh, in the TAP program that, that care about soldiers, want to help them with their process. Uh, one of the key points that you spoke about earlier uh, before we started was resume. Uh, we have certified counselors that will help soldiers, you know, that whole population of soldiers, uh, Department of Army, civilians, family members, caregivers, help them work their, give them the information to be successful so they can build their resume. Uh, so we, we have a ton of stuff going on uh, that we're pretty proud of. Absolutely. The, 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 apparently this has come a long way since uh, I was, and I don't even, uh, I got out like 23 years ago from active duty and, uh, it, I got none of this. I got none of this. I was, and it was one of those last minute things. It's like, are you going to re-enlist or not? Are you going to re-enlist or not? And uh, don't make the same stupid mistake I did. Stay in. <laughs> so re-enlist. <laughs> I got out and immediately wanted to get back in, but they wouldn't take me back. <laughs> the, <laughs> but um, yeah, I didn't get any of this uh, transition assistance at all. It was, uh, okay, here, sign here, sign here, and have fun. Right. And I went, I, oh, and then that's when the grass is greener syndrome hit. <laughs> well, one thing I would tell you about that is that's one of the reasons we're hitting the timeline is, is because uh, the longer soldiers have, because TAP program in general is supposed to be a deliverable approach, right? So it's, you want it over time because uh, that benefits the customer, the soldier, what, you know, our customer that's coming in. Uh, we don't want them to come in that last, you know, five days before they exit service and try to push them through because they're not, we're not really benefiting the soldier or the customer at that, at that point. No, you're, you're not. You're checking the block, and it's, that's not going to take care of anyone. So that's, that's why we're really pushing. Come early. Come talk to our counselors. And, and to be honest with you, if you if you you know you're getting out and you're, you're not even within a 24-month or 18th month and you just have questions, come down to the education center. We'll be more than happy to, to you know, give you information, whatever the case may be. Because uh, if you look at the deliverable approach like we talked about, we can space it out in time. And that gives us that, 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 that customer the ability to – Take the information, go to the classes, come back, and, and then they can talk to their spouse. Hey, this is what, what we're looking at. This is what we're going to be discussing. And speaking about spouses, as a soldier is going through the transit assistance, if their spouse wants to attend those classes with them, they're more than welcome. They can come in and sit in the VA brief. They can come in and sit in, uh, you know, employment day or whatever, whatever it may be. We encourage it. Yeah, the VA, the, you have a VA brief and everything. Oh, man, this has come a long way. I didn't get anything. I was lucky. I, I didn't even get a handshake. <laughs> we're, tied but, at, we're tied at the hip with the Department of Labor, uh, Veteran Affairs, uh, the, the, the Small Business Association, and so we have we have a ton of capabilities. Now, if somebody goes in and they're they're coming up and they they got over a year, so they've got plenty of time and all that stuff. Um, do you guys even? I know you're going to discuss all the opportunities and and things that are available. Do you also discuss the possibility of reenlistment, or are we past that by the time they come no. to you? No, we absolutely do. So, so uh, one of the things they do, they go through is it's called continuum service. They go talk to the reserve counselors. Uh, but TAP can also be a uh, effective reenlistment tool for for commands because anyone that's getting out of the service or retiring, I retired. Getting out of retirement was scary. Trying to figure out your next step in life is 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 scary times for anyone. It is. I mean, I was you know I went out or after I got out of active duty and couldn't get back into active duty, I wanted to. Wanted to continue because I didn't want to lose my retirement, right. so I joined the guard, and uh, you know, and then I was in the guard for so long, and you know, after after you, this is part of your identity for so long, you just don't know how to identify after you retire. Oh, yeah. I mean, so I'm glad somebody's getting some counseling. Well, I would tell you that that's <laughs> one thing that we're really pushing with commanders uh, here, and, and they're really pushing it across the army. Is is you, you running? We talked about earlier. You have compliance and time and standards. Uh, one of them is is getting the soldiers enrolled. You know, and all those those gates met before 365. One of the challenges we fight on the installation is soldiers that are we know they're going to reenlist. They're, they're talking with the reenlistment uh, counselor and they're saying, hey, I, I'm, I want this as a bonus or I want to go here, whatever the case is, and you understand that. 
So a lot of times commanders or leaders won't enroll them into a tab because they know the soldiers are going to reenlist. Well, that affects our percentage as far as compliance and timeliness on the installation. So we, we still encourage those commands. If they're in that window, send them down to transition assistance. If anything else, we're just going to help educate them on future future programs and make them, uh, you know, build their information and knowledge that that soldier may be able to carry back to the formation. The minute they reenlist, we can take them out of the program. But all the paperwork's still there, and you've got you checked your boxes just like <laughs> like it, like it doesn't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather, you know, honestly, I'd rather have everything done or lined up and not need it than need it and not have it there lined up. Oh, so, absolutely, yeah. And then, and then, you know, another thing that we look at is, you know, from our perspective at the Transition Assistance Office, if you're a medical separation, you're a chapter, you're a retiree, or you're just a normal ETS, those don't matter to us. You're our customer. One of those gates. Every You're our customer. That doesn't apply. We want to take care of you. We want to give you the assets and the capability and information to ensure that you're successful as you as you move on to your next chapter in life, you know. Uh, and then when you look at the program, one of the key aspects in, in diving into the program, a soldier will come in, they'll get all that, you know, they'll get those initial assessments done. Uh, they're initially going to be signed a, a tier. They're going to be broken down into a tier one, tier two, or tier three. And the way that works is, you know, uh, tier one is they have a good plan. They have, they have a job already lined up or they have education, whatever the case may be. Uh, tier two is they're doing well, they, they, but they, they may need some additional training. And tier three, they really don't have a plan yet which is good because when we go into our tier three soldiers, we have two day tracks, whether it be department, uh, department of labor, uh, business association, uh, we have capabilities and that, that some of those are going to be mandatory for the soldier based on their plan. Uh, that's why it's important for them to come early because we got to spread that time out because if they are a tier three soldier, those are the ones we really, we really want to get the help for because they don't have a plan. Yeah. So. That, that could have been really helpful. <laughs> the, uh, now, um, you have the resumes, uh, you offer uh, opportunities to go to cl uh, school and all that. So there's, uh, while well, there's schools over here in the education center where right. you are, um, I've been uh, lucky to have been able to see the graduations from some of these uh, schools, like uh, I believe the truck driving school mm -hmm. um, and some we the welding school and so you can help people get into those classes now, now can they get in before, or can they get into those classes before they get out and start taking them? They can. They they can absolutely. So so which in reference to that is it's called the career skills program. So what you have is you have the career skills program. It's, when you look at that, you really got to look at three different tiers. So you got the career skills program, which is approved uh, programs that the Army has, and that's not just our installation. Uh, so we have one here on the installation, uh, but that w there's uh, up to I believe it's 220 now across the U.S. Uh, that are approved that soldiers can get into, and then, then go up to 180 days prior to prior to accident service. Obviously, uh, it's going to be approved by the the, the first commanding uh, general officer of that uh, soldier that's submitted the packet. Uh, that's one bucket. So you have your career skills program, Army approved uh, businesses, organizations. Then you have Skill Bridge. Skill Bridge encompasses all DOD, so Army, Air Force, Navy, you name it. Uh, you can sign up for those. Uh, and then we have what is, if none of those fit your buckets, like an army one, I couldn't find what I wanted to do. The skill bridge, I looked everywhere and it really doesn't fit what I need. You have what's called an uh, individual internship. And what that is, is a soldier goes out and finds a business and gets that business to agree to accept them for an internship. And there, there's parameters that they have to do, you know, uh, but it's a capability that a soldier has. So they can go out and work for this company uh, as an intern, which normally is unpaid. It's unpaid. But Correct. but they're still in the Army. Correct. So they're getting paid by the Army. Correct. Win-win. Win. Oh. And then by the, by the time you get out, they're all trained up. They got a job waiting for them, and they, and they don't even have to move or do anything. Well, absolutely. That is amazing. I like that program. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, so what are some of the, the, um, the uh, opportunities for... Uh, or some of the classes that they have to go through uh, before they get out, or some of the the meanings and things that you're going to have to do yeah. specifically for them. Uh, you can. So you want to talk Army Day? Are you, Army Day? That sounds Army interesting. Army Day. All right. Do we talk about Army Day or Employee Day? Uh, uh, talk Army Day. Army the Day classes. Okay, the Army Day is going. They're going to start off, and that's when they're going to have three classes, which is uh, my transition, MOC crosswalk, and then the. Third one finance. is finance. 
finance. That's the Army Day classes, and that's all done on a on um, on a Monday. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, what what is involved in those classes, uh, the Army Day? Uh, what exactly do they do? Uh, well, you do talk about first of all my transition, how they're going to transition out of the military, um, helping them out to figure out what they're going to do after they get out. And then the MOC crosswalk trying to take their job that they have in the military and what they're going to try to, you know, uh, put it together with the job that they're going to do once they get out. And then the finance class helping them with their finance. So it's pretty much uh, are you ready to get out? Are you, are you, are you even prepared to, for what's about to happen? Correct. So it's like, hey, look, you've got to, di- th- you got to get your ducks in a row. Yeah. So that's well, why these ducks are all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's one of the things that, that, that we, we kind of look at it. So the soldier's going to walk in. They're going to do their, their you know, initial assessment, right? They do their uh, pre, pre-survey. So they'll fill that out. Everything else, the counselor's going to look at it. The, once that soldier fills it out, that, that's where the counselor's going to build their playbook for that soldier's success. You know, success. Um, but they're not, gonna, they're not there to change the soldier's mind. It's the soldier's plan. Uh, but they, our, our counselors want to throw every capability that we have to help that soldier develop their own plan. Uh, and we have, we, we've had a lot of success on this installation so far. That's awesome. Now, the, um, some of the uh, other programs, you said there was an Army Day and then there's uh, Employer Day? We do have Employer Day. So, so uh, Employer Days, Mr. Hill is all over that. Uh, he, he does a <laughs> phenomenal job. Oh, my goodness, man. That's the bread and butter for me. The employer days. They just now, come in and say, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> no, employer days, I'm excited about that, especially in, in 2025, where we're going to start off in January. On the 14th and the 28th, we'll be hosting what is called employer days. And employer days will be held in the education center, and they'll go from 9 to 12. And that's when we invite four employers to come and talk to the soldiers and tell them what jobs they have to have to offer for them. Um, and yours and January's is already lined up. January's already lined up, so we're going from January we, to October. Do we have a uh, Do we have a list of the employers who are going to be the guest speakers at these uh, at these uh, employer days? We do. Oh, can you share them with us, <laughs> <laughs> or is it supposed to be a surprise? Well, we want to be. You know, we want to keep something under the hat for us. You know. <laughs> I think I didn't want to ask the question now, right? Because sometimes it's like, no, we can't put it out right now, but come and see, and then we'll let you know when you walk through the door. Surprise! One, one of the key things with Employers Day is that, that I want to highlight is, is it's, it's four businesses each time, you know, and it, we, we encourage that. So the businesses are going to sign up. Now, these gonna, aren't just local businesses, they're right? Okay. They're, they're not. Like, like uh, one of them, for example, that comes to all the time is Texas Department of Public Safety. Uh, so they come from all over. Uh, Mr. Hill was just speaking with the business out of Pennsylvania. So, so we have reach, uh, but we keep it a small population for a reason, you know, because uh, we want to over time have a steady state of businesses that are able to provide opportunities for soldiers throughout the entire year. Because one of the things that we look at is is the population as it ebbs and flows, as far as what is our high PCS months. What is you know and and. You know, or transition for the, uh, not PCS, but when they transition or exit service, uh, which is drives right into our hiring events. Uh, you know, it's, it's why those dates have been chosen. Oh, okay. That makes, well, that makes a lot of sense. The, um, now, I asked about the, the local businesses because, um, you know, people don't always want to stay at their last duty station. But, um, you know, if you're, if you've been in long enough uh, and you're going to get out, a lot of things, are based on locality of installations Mm -hmm. for the uh, convenience and the uh, things that are available. Right. Now, um, in that case, or do you help with, you help with the retirees also, right? Okay. So yeah. So if you want to get out and get a job near an installation, these, these businesses will know which one is closest to them or, or you will. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, we, prime example, we had a soldier come in yesterday uh, that's going to Texas, and we provided him a, a snapshot of every job center that's that's got hiring events and everything else for the state of Texas. So, yes, you can look here. That's where you're going. But here's other capabilities in, in Texas. So, and it, you know, you're looking at an 11-page document of capabilities that we're providing a soldier, and we can do that for any state in the U.S. because, you know, we've got a phenomenal team that, that helps us find a lot of that stuff. Um, one of the other things I'd like to highlight is is uh, uh, what we're really trying to get after is is uh, we're going to have our hiring events. Mr. H- Mr. Hill's going to talk about that. Um, 
but we want to have soldiers please come to our events you know come talk to us everything else we're, we're getting out there you know obviously we're here on the podcast uh we set i set up a display in the px i set up a table and just want to talk to soldiers uh so you're going to see the tab team out there if you have questions let us know because uh, we're here to help so we we should get t-shirts made and you could tap out <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you've got I, these the uh, the job opportunity. Yeah, I, I digress. That <laughs> might be trademark. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the um, the hiring events. Uh, you got what four four employers at the hiring events? Uh, four employers at employer days. Um, oh, the okay. employer, employer days. days. Okay. Uh-huh. So what are the odds of somebody walking in, talking to these companies, and walking out with a job lined up and ready to go? So are are there? I'm, I'm sure there's good odds, but uh, or is this just a an eye opener and saying, well, you can apply for here and and stuff like that? What how how serious are these businesses of business, hiring? Businesses come with jobs. Otherwise, that's why we change it from the um, it used to be called something else, a hiring event, a and job fair, job fair. We change it from a job fair to a hiring event, which means when you come here, you need to have jobs ready. To be filled. Well, that also lends towards the people that are going there, the soldiers and, and people that are going to the hiring events. They need to go prepared. Correct. They need to go yep. there with their resume, uh, dressed decently. Uh, so that pretty much leaves me out. <laughs> the um, so you got to be you know, with an uh, a clue on what you're going to do and how you're going to do it, and that. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, absolutely. Like we appreciate every business organization, but we want businesses and organizations that are ready to hire soldiers. That's that's our market. That's who we want here, uh, because like we said, like we talked about earlier, it's a scary time. Let's 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 add some comfort and take some of that away from them. Yeah, uh, yeah. Getting out is a, a big hmm, big deal. It's like, what am I going to do now? Oh yeah, <laughs> unemployment only lasts so long. <laughs> Uh, but you also talked. You, you, I met, I heard you mention the VA also. So you, you help with um, what? Do you help with VA or anything, or do you just mention this is how it goes about? Well, they go through a class. It's an eight-hour class that they go through with the VA, and um, help them prepare for their VA. I think they help them with claims and. Um, just the VA benefits. Yeah, the, actually, the uh, that's something I try to tell everybody is uh, if you are getting out, uh, don't. But if you do, if you are getting out, um, make sure that you have a cop, you have a exit, uh, an exit in, or ex- exam. That's what it is. <laughs> physical exam. Go to the doctor. Get get everything written down. Make sure you have all of your uh, your hot, your medical records when you go in to file. Uh, with the VA. Yeah. Our, our VA team down here does a phenomenal job. Like I, I went through that, that class, uh, and it, it absolutely opened my eyes and it set me up for success as far as capability, as far as who to talk to, how the claim process goes, how you got to get it submitted. But it, it covers much more than that. It's going to cover just your veteran benefits alone. Uh, cause there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of veterans out there that don't take advantage of their, their benefits just cause they don't know. Yeah. The, the one that I just, I don't get it, but every I keep seeing it's like, hey, did you know that you're entitled if you're a v, if you're a veteran, you're entitled to a VA loan? It's like, well, yeah, everybody knows that, but apparently yeah. I'm wrong. <laughs> Not everybody knows that. Yeah. So it's just even the simple the simple things that you might know might think that uh, is common knowledge. Yeah. Other people just don't just don't know these things are available to them. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, that's that's why we're really pushing this communication. You know, hey, we want to put tap out there. You, you're seeing it in the Guardian. You're going to see it in the podcast. Uh, we we did a video. Uh, it was a phenomenal video, by the way. Um, but come see us. You know, come see us. We're here to help. Yeah, nothing beats <laughs> nothing beats um, in person. Yeah, talking yeah. to some. That's, I try telling that to my kid. The uh, it's like you got to you got to get in their face. You got to talk to them face to face. Monitors and and uh, computer screens and and uh, the internet. It's not it's not where it's at. You have to talk to the people in person. Oh yeah, they got to get to know who you are. I would like if Mr. Hill, if he could highlight the hiring events that we got coming up. Because Absolutely, I, we're, please. We're excited about those. Well, let's, uh, Mr. Hill. A hiring event, April fifteenth. April fifteenth is going to be uh, in the. I think we're going to have it in the gym. Warrior Fitness War, Gym. Warrior Fitness Gym, and it's going to be from ten to thirteen hundred hours. That's going to be the next our next hiring event, and then we're going to have Law Enforcement Day. It's going to be September the nineteenth, and that's going to be from nine to eleven in the Education Center. 
nice. And if well, the law enforcement sex or the law enforcement hiring event, you better get uh, you better get Nick over there to. Oh, speak. He's, yeah. he's he is aware. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, well, that, that's a great point, though. That's one of the things we're looking at. So we we we. Uh, we're, in, we're starting to include our installation uh, jobs that, that we have on installation as well because we have, just like you know myself, you said, there's a lot of soldiers that will retire or get out of service and stay here, Mr. Hill, too. Right. Uh, one of the things I like to highlight about the, the hiring affair is, is you're, you're going to see the flyer around. It's going to be posted on our website, but uh, it's, it, we try to make it easy for everyone, right? So you can fill, fill this form out, email it back to the point of contact on there, which is, is Mr. Hill, or you can just scan the QR code with your phone and put your information in, and it's going to give us a notification. Uh, we're going to have 40 employers at this event. So 40. 40, and we already have uh, 10 signed up. Oh, wow. This December. Nice, and that's in December? What? what no, does, I mean, yeah, in December we have 10. Oh, they, the okay, you got 10 signed up already. Yeah, Correct. Nice, April. that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, so we've got the that. What about um, education, uh, uh, the things, um, GI Bill, you go through uh, how to – help with the GI Bill so, or so, at, at least let people know that if you're not going to use it, it's transferable to your, uh, your kin. There is, they're going to, they're going to go through an education. They're, they're, there's also a two day track if they're looking at going into, um, uh, pursuing education once they get out of service, they're going to get the class on everything that they need as far as education. And that's, that's really where we do a good battle handoff, right? So, so we're really focused on that. That's one of our gates, but we have subject matter experts in our building. Nice. You, you got Mr. Glenn that works, that runs a phenomenal education program. And that's where we walk that soldier down to execute a warm handoff and say, here. And we have, you know, because we have three colleges inside the education center that, you know, you got CTC, you got uh, Northwestern, and you have, uh, was it Iowa? Mm -hmm. Upper Iowa. So you used to have Michigan in there too. Yeah, right. Michigan. <laughs> there may be some uh, some stragglers, some, some local, uh, <laughs> very famous local school coming soon, but I won't say who they are. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. I mean, the uh, now let these employer. Or you said the, it's an employee because I want to make sure that I'm not mixing the employer and the hiring events up because so they are two separate things. Completely different. So, and so what's the main difference between the employer? And the hiring event. Okay, so so the best way to look at it is in your employer's days is going to happen starting in January all the way through October. It's going to happen uh, twice a month. And that's the one with the four? They're going to have four. four. Uh, that's steady state. So so we want to always have a business at the education center that is willing to hire a soldier so that, so that they have capability. Then we're just trying to bring it all in because we have a high PC or a high ETS uh, retiree rate um, right around April time frame. So that's when we're bringing in 40 employers to increase our capability for the soldiers that are getting out. We also looked at uh, law enforcement. We kind of we have some law enforcement going to be at this, but our law enforcement hiring event in uh, in September 19th. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of soldiers that get out and they do law enforcement. You know, it just it kind of ties. Like I was a, I was a 19 Delta Cavalry Scout when I was in the Army. Law enforcement directly ties in in the stuff that I did in the military, and just like many other soldiers uh, that that served. So we want to create that, and we're we're we're, we're trying to do. We're, it's not just police officers. You're looking at uh, correction officers. We're looking at possibly bringing in, you know, uh, three letter agencies, and you know, we we want to yeah, provide like, a great opportunity for our customers. Yeah, three letter agencies like uh, the TSA, TSA, right. and uh, the CIA, and the FBI, and yeah. and uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, you know what I learned? Uh, actually, I've learned a lot of stuff, but um, to be an FBI field agent, you have to have a bachelor's degree. Yeah. I did not. Uh, well, I've known that for, but it was, before I knew that, I didn't know that. What? I guess that makes sense. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> that's what going, that, and that's what going to TAP will help you learn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we've got, and your, uh, so your first employer day with the four is going to be in January. January the 14th. And your first hiring event. It's going to be April 15th. April 15th. Right. So we've got time to uh, get over to see you and get our resumes uh, built up and uh, get uh, all of our paperwork involved or lined up and get our ducks in a row and um, then we can come on over and uh, talk to you and see what's going on. Absolutely. Absolutely.
That was awesome. And uh, I hope to have you back in here. Uh, maybe we can get you back in here after your employer day, after an employer day or two, uh, right before your hiring event to get the word out again, Absolutely. get you back in here to, to do that. I appreciate it. So uh, what I would leave you with from, 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 from myself is, is uh, if you have any questions, you know, the best way to do it is, is come into the education center, speak with our team. The counselors are all located on the second floor. Our office is located on, at 119 on the first floor. Uh, anything you need, come down and see us. If you can't get down there, call us. You know, 337-531-1591 will get you linked up with a counselor. 337-531-1594 uh, will get you linked up with myself uh, and Mr. Hill. Nice. Uh, and if you can't do either one of those, the phone's not working, the feet aren't working, computer's working, get on the website. Get on the website. We have a TAP website uh, located through the Garrison page. Uh, we did some updates. Um, it's got a lot of great information on there, so we, we look forward to speaking with everyone about their transition needs. Well, I hope everyone, uh, and if if you're watching and you're not at Fort Johnson, um, I'm sure there's TAP offices at uh, your installation also. And if not, if you're not at an installation, join the Army, and then uh, then you can go through TAP. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Osmond, Clifton uh, Hill, I appreciate you guys coming in, and uh, i really, uh, really glad that uh, we were able to get the word out this time around, and we will have you back here again. And thanks for coming in. And uh, I'm Jeff England from the Fort Johnson Public Affairs Office. Uh, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and if you have something that you'd like to see on our show, please leave it in the comments. Uh, get a hold of us somehow, and um, I'm going to put up the uh, home.army.mil slash Johnson. That's our home site. And please uh, just uh, remember, we'll be here again, and I'll be uh, watching and listening at you later. That was easy.